This tutorial will show you how to create uh, an annotated case report form. It actually generates a template file which you can use to annotate your final CRF. Uh, it, it's applied and created at the same time that you create your defined PDF file or defined XML file. So when you click on the generate button, that's when it generates both files. It prompts that I'm going to overwrite the existing file, which is fine. So at this point, it's going to capture all the metadata from the source data and generate the define XML, as you can see here. So all the metadata from the input data sets are now generated in this define XML file. At the same time, all the same metadata is generated in this annotated case report form here. So let me show you those files. Um, so if I go to that directory, I see that the define XML files are created much the same way that uh, the, the new annotated case report file, form file is created. So when I open that up in Microsoft Word, the first thing I would see are just a list of variables. So this is uh, the name of the variables here and to the left of that, it uses a two-level dot notation. That's the name of the data set. So if I were to scroll down, I will see that the next data set are all the uh, variables for CM and so forth. So I can have all of my variables that way. Uh, the value here is that you don't have to retype this uh, so that you don't have any typos or mistakes in, in getting your annotations done. So I'm going to select the one that I'm going to use. You can hold down the uh, shift key if you like to select multiple variables and then you can go ahead and copy that. And I'm going to now open up the actual blank case report form which I have here. Uh, this is another uh, file which I have all the, the case report form without any annotations. Now if you have this in a PDF format or other file formats, you can export it as an image file and then insert it into this uh, case, um, Microsoft Word file. So if I were to go down to the uh, adverse event CRF here as an example and paste my annotated variables, these are the same variables that I had previously copied from the uh, template. So now each one of these appear as an object which I can then drag and place over the actual annotated um, location that I want it to appear. So for example, the domain, it could be generically placed at the top, um, whereas the subject ID here could be right next to where the subject ID is defined, and so forth, so the sequence variable, and so forth. Now, in addition to annotating it and moving the variables around like, like I'm doing here. You can also add additional notations. Um, for example, you can insert um, different objects within Microsoft Word such as an arrow. So I can say here that this is pertaining to this area here. So this is more exacting in that your particular annotation could have an arrow which could you know, note more exact, exactly where that placement should be. In addition to arrows, you can insert other objects such as, for example, I'm going to do a curly bracket. There are many things you can do, but these are just examples where I can say, okay, curly brackets from here to here. So I'm going to move my arrow uh, to point to a different location now. So what this is indicating is that this annotated variable applies to this whole region, this whole area of where the adverse event is um, just captured in the case report form. So once you have done this and you have all your notations done, you can convert this to PDF and have the final annotated case report form. The nice thing about it is that your variable names uh, along with the data set that it belongs to are all generated for you so you don't have to type this and you know p possibly mistype it and have a, a mistake in, in typo. This is more exacting 
reflecting exactly uh, the same variable names that will appear in the define XML. Uh, so there's no uh, there's one-to-one -one correspondence here.